Hello Summoners! Now before we get started, I wanted to tell you about my club on club.gg called Exiles Exiles. This is a completely legitimate and easy way to earn free skins while playing League. It's also a way to support me. So if you like the content here and you think my content is good enough, I'd really appreciate you joining my club. In the description there'll be a link so just click that link and press join the club to register and then press play for the club to download the app. Then you just select a challenge before each game of a league you play. All you have to do is just earn these coins while doing these challenges and then these coins can be used to buy skins and RP. If you're going to be playing league anyway, especially just some normals with your friends, you might as well join my club. As some of you veterans may remember, we used to do fan games all the time every Friday night, and I intend on starting these up again in the next few weeks, so if you join Exiles Exiles to play with me and compete with me and other Toxic Riven mains. In the previous episode of Iconic Items, we discussed arguably the most unfun item to ever play against, which was DFG. And if you missed that episode, make sure to check it out after this video. I do say arguably though, because there is one more item that I believe could be debated as the most toxic, hard to balance, and unfair item in League of Legends history. The thing is though, it only existed that way for a short time, because when it was put into the game back in Season 3, it was seen as a troll item. Nobody really built it. Nice, and I got my banner of command now, we're set boys. So, okay, Banner of Command was overpowered and broken just for a few patches in Season 8, right? Why did Riot even remove it then? How come they didn't just nerf it? Well, if you thought that, you would be pretty mistaken, because actually, Banner of Command has been around for a very, very long time. And the original concept dates all the way back to the Alpha of League of Legends, and started out as just a summoner spell. During the early years of League of Legends, we had a lot more summoner spells to play with. Some were quite interesting, but ultimately were removed or reworked completely into something else. For example, Clairvoyance was a summoner spell that globally gave you vision of that area. This was really helpful to scout for invades, see what side of the map the jungler was starting, scout ganks before they happened, check to see if the mid laner was roaming, you get the idea. While definitely serving a niche, it wasn't that useless actually, and during Season 1 Worlds, professional teams did opt for Clairvoyance as their summoner spell of choice in some of their games. Today, this spell was pretty much reworked into the Blue Trinket, which mostly does the same thing. Also, if you really needed this on your team, why not just play Ash? I guess a Hawkshot is too OP. That being said, I want you to take a look at this picture. Chances are less than 1% of you have ever seen this or know what this is. This was in League of Legends from Alpha up until Season 3 and was a summoner spell. This is called Promote. Promote metamorphs the nearest allied siege minion into an anti-turret cannon healing it, granting it bonus stats, and causing it to grant the caster gold for its kills. It had a cooldown of 300 seconds, and there was a mastery in the utility tree back in the day, when masteries looked like this, that caused it to become even stronger. Casting Promote on a cannon gave it a couple of effects. It buffed its attack speed, it gave it some armor, magic resist, and some health. It would turn the minion into looking like some kind of death rider and it was called a siege rider minion. They would look really cool, almost like a Karthus or a Grim Reaper. Kinda scary to be honest, but this minion was a bad boy, because back in the day, this spell was crazy overpowered. All that you had to do was get one good push during the mid game and you could have all 5 people take promote and run it down mid. The buff that you gave to the minion also gave a minion a cleave, kinda like Tiamat, so it also gave it wave clear and pushed the wave faster. Promote was nerfed and changed right away, with a massive base health nerf to the creep way back in the alpha stages. This was a pretty hefty nerf, so Promote was actually buffed a few times as well in order to try to make it a bit more viable. 
Remember, by today's standards, Promote would have still been insanely, brutally overpowered, but it was buffed back in the beta and alpha stages because in those days, things in general were a hundred times more overpowered. In addition, a bug was found out that came out and it caused the summoner spell to have to be removed instantly. Promote ended up stacking. Yes, it stacked. So when I say that five people ran down mid, that means that they didn't even have to do it on five different minions. They could stack one big minion if they wanted to. The result became an utterly unstoppable push. The words from Riot said it all, by saying we're removing it for now until we figure out how to make it okay for casual pushing. Basically, they didn't want the spell to be the end all be all, rather a healthy option that a split pusher could take. So Promote got a two week vacation, and when it was finally unbanned, it was added back into the game. This time, it promoted the nearest allied siege minion, increasing its attack range, health, armor, and magic resist. It had a 180 second cooldown. This version of the summoner spell was seen as lackluster, kinda useless, it didn't really do much, because the one good niche of the spell, which was blatantly overpowered and ruined everyone's games because it was unbeatable, now couldn't do that, so nobody wanted to take it. Remember that this was a summoner spell, and even though it had its cooldown reduced to 180 seconds, that's still a summoner spell that people have to give up. Players got a lot, I mean a lot better at the game by the end of Season 2 compared to the alpha and beta stages. They learned a lot more about what summoner spells you should take and how to utilize them more effectively. People figured out that you should always take flash, which remember, at one point wasn't necessarily a meta. Even if you were a split pusher, why not just take teleport? Why not just take ignite to get stronger in lane? Why not take ghost or exhaust for insane 1v1 potential? This logic is part of the reason that Promote needed a rework. It was intended to help teams push, but unless it was so OP that it was unfair, players would just rather have a different sum. This is why, with the introduction of Season 3, Promote was reworked into an item. That item, of course, was Banner of Command. Banner on its release was an item that gave ability power and armor. It cost 2400 gold and built out of a blasting wand and the now defunct Emblem of Valor. Emblem of Valor was an item that gave you 20 armor and this passive aura. That aura gave allies near you some health regen and it was a solid support item, especially since it was only 650 gold. This support item was eventually changed and reworked into today's Relic Shield, so instead of passively giving your allies some health regen, you have now of course give them health by whacking the minions on low HP. That aura, by the way, did actually transfer to Banner of Command, with an additional bonus that nearby allied minions gained 15% damage, so it buffed all of your minions, which is pretty slick. The active, much like its predecessor, was called Promote. It transformed a nearby siege minion to a more powerful unit, and you gained all the gold that this unit earns on a 180 second cooldown. Because of the build path, its cost, and of course what it did, it's fairly obvious that Banner of Command was meant to be a support item. On its release, it did give 50 ability power, but in an attempt to make it even better for supports, two patches later it was given 10% CDR, but reduced the AP by 10, really enforcing the idea that mage supports such as Morgana should really love this item. But here's the problem, they didn't. In fact, no one did. This item sucked and was seen as a completely troll item. Woo! The banner of command! It killed one creep. They tried their best on patch 3.14 to make it better for mages, because if supports aren't building it, maybe mages will. So it was given a new look. This time, no more armor, no more aura, 10% less CDR in exchange for 80 ability power. Now, 80 AP on an item that was only 2400 gold isn't half bad. In terms of cost efficiency, that's okay, it's pretty good. So finally, people will buy the item. Someone, a random Kasten player and challenger is going to find out that Kasten is OP with banner, right? Right? <sighs> well, no, not really. Because the core problem is a simple economics equation. Trade-off. You can absolutely buy Banner of Command on a mage. You get 80 ability power and 10 CDR, go push a wave with Banner and gain the gold that the creep gives you, and it also allows yourself to take objectives a little bit easier. This is fine, in theory, but horrible in practice. The problem is your limitations within League. 
you only get 6 item slots and a limited amount of gold during the early game. No champions really have Banner of Command as a core item. You could spend all of your gold on Banner, but you essentially miss out on a Void Staff for the same amount of gold, and Void Staff's damage passive is infinitely stronger on an AP champion than Banner ever will be. If you lose your Athenes, you miss out on the Mana Regen, which allows you to stay in lane longer and use more spells. If you lose out on your Void Staff, you'll never cut through tanks. If you leave out Leandres, you'll never bust through anyone. And of course, if you leave out Deathcap or Zhonya's, remembering that these both used to give 120 AP, then you'll be lacking in your AP. For mages that didn't go Athenes first who don't have mana, such as Vladimir, they had a different core item that they abused at the time, which was Woda. Will of the Ancients. This was a core sustain item and it was the best spell vamp item in the game, something that Riot has completely removed now, I suppose with the exception of Gunblade, since it technically does work on Vladimir, but it's not necessarily a good item for him. Delaying your core was almost never worth it, with the other problem being something else to consider, which is that the active, honestly, was terrible. It doesn't matter about the stats anymore here, because it was a cheap item with a good active in theory, so if the active was good enough, it might be worth it. But it wasn't. The thing to clearly understand, and what was undertuned and lacked any identity, is that the promote active was terrible. It took more than a year for Banner to receive any more changes. But Riot once again would try again with Banner of Command. Instead of Preseason 3, now we launch the new Summoner's Rift map and Preseason 5. Hey, just one more quick reminder that you can join my club using the link in the description to win free skins while playing League of Legends. Patch 4.20 is an iconic patch for League of Legends. You may remember the Warwick Rampage of Patch 4.20, where he became the best champion in the game with the new Devourer and Red Smite. Riot had taken another try at the jungle this year, and with a new map, a new jungle, spawned, of course, a new Banner of Command. Firstly, the item lost some AP. Its new stats were 60 ability power, 10% cooldown reduction, 200 health, and 200 magic resist. It was also given a new build path, this time building out of Aegis. The gold was shot way up, from 2400 to 3k gold, so if the item sucked, you really know that people won't be building it, because 3k gold is very expensive. The Legion Aura was pretty good, and was one of the shining points for Banner. This alone was definitely valuable and was one of the reasons people even built Locket of the Iron Solari to begin with. Promote itself received some heavy changes. The cooldown was buffed, now only being 2 minutes instead of 3 minutes. You could now promote casters and melee minions, not just cannons. The minion, for the first time, was now immune to magic damage, which is something that would become crucial for Banner's history. Finally, the minions that were promoted gained some pretty sick stats when promoted, incentivizing you to actually use it anytime you can. This way you don't have to wait for a cannon wave to come. You can spam it on cooldown every 2 minutes and push some waves with it. So this time, things are looking up for the item. Even though it's expensive, Banner is clearly buffed here. For Season 5, we oughta see more of this item, right? Come on. Well, actually this time, there was one thing that did pop up, and thanks to Red Mercy's video, it became kinda popular for a bit, called Necromancy Malzahar. Necro Malz was popularized by two creators, Poke and Red Mercy. The idea they came up with was to play Malzahar, abuse the Voidlings from his kit to push towers, buy a banner of command, push with that, and buy the new ZZ Rot portal that was just added in Season 5. Combo these three things together, you have an obnoxious, tower-destroying, objective-securing beast. Malzahar's Voidlings at the time before he received his rework were gods when it came to tower pushing, and there was finally some kind of viable build with Banner of Command involved. In fact, Red Mercy actually predicted that it would be played in LCS and assumed with decent confidence that this build was widespread OP. While it definitely gained some steam and momentum, ultimately the build never saw the light of day in competitive play. The problem was still one major factor, which is the reliability of core items. If you don't get to make use of the active and really blow the game open by sieging, then you were almost always better off just buying a different mage item. Banner ended up receiving two more buffs and changes in Season 5, really trying to push it towards viability, but never really amounted to anything for Riot. This wasn't really working as an AP option. Mages did not want it. But that's the exact thing. 
Remember how back in the day this item wasn't even meant for mages? It was meant to be a utility item. So why give up on that idea? Why go these three years having such a direct feeling that this has to be for mages? Well, Riot remembered those days, and decided on patch 6.22, nearly four years since Promote was a summoner spell, to try again for Season 7. Banner had been hit with another rework. This time, it was a full utility tank item. The AP was finally gone, and substituted for some tank stats. It gave 400 mana, 60 armor, 30 MR, 10% CDR, and it reduced the cost to its lowest ever, for the low low price of 2200 gold. This makes much more sense, and in theory, this is balanced. Hang on, wait a second, I know I said in theory, and not in practice, but in theory, this item could exist in a balanced state on a tank. Let me explain why. If Banner was made so OP, and given 100 AP that it was actually good on Malzahar, then a damaged champion who can easily 1v1 you, and can also wreck your towers at the same time, becomes an unstoppable sideline threat that can't be dealt with. It's kinda like trying to imagine if they made Banner of Command a crit item. Can you imagine if this was good on Trindomir what he would be doing to your team? If Banner was made for tanks, champions that are extremely slow at pushing towers due to not building attack speed or damage, then this gives tanks that boost to help them sidelane and push much quicker. Banner helping a Maokai split push and take turrets doesn't really sound, in theory, nearly as oppressive as Malzahar or Trindomir ruining your day. If you want some proof of this, well, why do you think Riot ended up putting Demolish, the tower pushing rune, in the resolve tree, and not in Domination, Precision, or Sorcery? They purposefully put it in the tree that most likely things like ADCs and split pushers won't take, for a reason, because you don't really want Caitlyn to constantly be proccing demolish, that's kind of OP. On patch 7.12, along with the ZZ rot changes, Banner was given a better passive now, and made more universal. It no longer gave mana and built out of a glacial shroud, and instead was given the raptor cloak build path. Already, people were seeing champions like Darius run you down with the passive, and this made this item much better and more viable on high base damage bruisers such as Darius and Garen, especially considering Garen doesn't even use mana. This item became much better for him. Before these changes, it was one of the times that Banner was in an okay spot. But honestly, it wasn't OP enough yet. The tanks had a viable option to help them split push, but at the time the meta was actually more favored towards ZZ Rot instead. This was the first time that ZZ Rot was viable in competitive play. Banner was still quite underrated though. We hadn't quite see it break through. That is, until one day, one crucial change to this guy. Hand of Baron is the buff that you get from killing Baron Nasher. Obviously, one of the main key elements to why Baron is such a key win condition is that it buffs your minions. One thing that has always seemed good in theory, but never played out with Banner of Command, is that you could buy the item as a third or a fourth item after 20 minutes. This way, if your team actually got Baron, you could promote your Baron creeps. So, on patch 8.4, everything, everything changed. Shockingly, in what wasn't even listed as a buff, but apparently a bug fix, cannon minions weren't doing the bonus damage to structures when empowered by Banner of Command. Riot, as they do, want to fix bugs. And holy moly, this was a game changer. Banner of Command rose to power as the best item in the game. It would only take a cannon minion 8 shots to take a turret by itself, and it massively outranged your entire team. The minion, of course, was completely immune to magic damage, so long-range wave clear champions who, in theory, should be able to counter banner minions' pushes, such as Azir, Victor, Lux, and Ziggs, were not able to do so. Only Sivir and other Static Shiv ADCs were able to do anything to this creep. This completely broke competitive play, and was obscenely overpowered. How much can it do? Look at that chunk! I think it's dealing more than what Heq's doing! I think Corky is still kind of contesting, but yeah, he, 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 he has no chance. That, that banner minion is just destroying every turret. Oh man, boom! It takes eight shots. Two. I'm <laughs> just gonna count them. Three. How do you get past that? Four. Got kicked backwards, roar of the slayer. So, so that's why you pick sign in this meta. There we go. Use that skill shot, and the tower's fallen. Look, the theory crafting's great. This makes no sense. Man, it just hurts so badly. Teams literally had to adjust so badly that they started having their supports take the rune minion dematerializer, just to counter the banner minion. You got six of them to work with, and it was one way to get rid of it. 
This was such a horrible concept for competitive viewing, and it was a balanced perspective nightmare. We can counter it with a rune that was never intended to be used this way, but once my rune runs out, then I have no counterplay, and these knuckleheads just sit on their barren buff banner siege minion that is completely immune to magic damage so my mage can't even kill it. In an attempt to fix things, Riot took to the magic immunity. One of the core problems, of course, is that magic damage mages can't even touch the minion, so they give it 70% damage reduction to everything instead. Sounds okay in theory, right? Well. Have you ever heard of this thing called the Cobra Effect, where when you try to fix a problem and your solution only makes everything worse instead? That was this change in a nutshell. Basically, instead of mages not being able to deal with it, now everyone can't deal with it. This was such a bad change that it had to be immediately hotfixed. On the very next patch, two weeks later, the infamous game-breaking item was completely removed from the game. Goodbye Banner of Command. Our story has been a long one. From alpha beginnings as a summoner spell, to hotfix removals as an item, it was an 8 year journey for Banner of Command. Such a simple concept, just the idea of making one minion, a single creep, just one unit a little bit stronger, completely breaking the game. But here's the thing, our story today might not be over just yet. We might still have some life in Banner of Command. You see, just a couple months ago, Riot went to the forums to speak on items in the shop, to talk about rebalancing, reducing clutter, removing items that aren't bought very often, and bringing back new items. In one sentence, they tell us they're looking to find a healthy way to implement a tower-pushing item, similar to the removed Banner of Command. So maybe one day, just maybe, we will finally see a version that's balanced. But for now, that's gonna be it. Thank you very much for watching.